Hi Omnichannel X, my name is Lee Boonstra. I'm a developer advocate at Google, specifically on conversational AI. And today I'm gonna talk about to improve your customer care with chatbots, uh, dialogue flow, speech technology, but also uh, robots in contact centers. And how can you create an omnichannel experience by combining all these technologies all together? My name is Lee Boonstrom. I'm a developer advocate at Google. I am specifically working on uh, conversational AI. So that means chatbots uh, with dialogue flow, speech technology, but also robots in contact centers. And today I'm going to talk a little bit more about that, how you can combine all these technologies and experiences to create an omni-channel experience. And you will hear later more about that. So chatbots, they are actually expected to trim the business cost by more than 8 billion per year within the next couple of years. And if you ask me this, then it's probably not the case by just creating a simple chatbot on a website. No, it's like the whole experience by combining all these technologies all together. And uh, specifically in uh, contact centers. Uh, if we will look at uh, the corona situation right now, uh, we, we experience these situations uh, where we have like, like hours of waiting times and waiting queues um, when you call a, a service number. Well, this should be all gone by now because there is technology that can help you to improve these experiences. When we talk about chatbots, and you might probably know this already, but when you uh, create chatbots, when you use the Google technology, we're making use of machine learning. That's different than chatbots from the 90s where uh, developers, they would create chatbots with code, if then else. If uh, your customers would talk to your chatbots and they would uh, say things in a different way or they spell the question wrong, then the chatbot wouldn't know what to answer. But with machine learning, that's not the case because we're training the chatbot uh, with certain training phrases and, and, and use cases so that the chatbot always know what to answer back. This is actually a major shift uh, when, we, when we talk about uh, chatbots because in the past at Google, we would develop applications mobile first. But nowadays, we, uh, we design our applications with an AI first strategy, which means that we learn from our data. And it's not only at Google, but we also you can do that. And I will talk about this today and I will share with you today how you can train your chatbots and your experiences to learn from, from your use cases. And it works based on machine learning. What is machine learning? Just very simply explained. Uh, think about it when you were a kid and you learned your first language. I bet your parents did not hand you over a dictionary and you had to read it from, uh, from A to Z and at the last page then suddenly you were a master in the Dutch language uh, or English language. No, we learned your example. Yeah, like that's a car, rides on the road, has four wheels. And that's a bike, it has two wheels and uh, it rides on the road. If you as a kid would see many cars and many bikes, then you would distinguish one from the other. And it's the same with machine learning or chatbots in our case, where we uh, feed, um, we create a data model or data scientists, they create a data model and then we feed it with lots and lots of data. Once we have that data uh, in, in the model, then the model will become smarter. And just like a kid, when I would say like to my parents, like, hey, that's a car. And my parents might say like, no, Lee, that's not a car. That's actually a truck because it has six wheels or it's bigger. And then I would remember that over time. Same is for machine learning models. And when you feed it with data and the machine learning model predicts it wrong, then we can correct the model so it becomes smarter over time. And that's a huge benefit uh, compared to traditional programming. And when we talk about chatbots, yeah, that's all about machine learning that it's all about machine learning. Uh, think about uh, a, a Google Home or the Google Nest is how the device now, nowadays is called. When you um, talk to the Google uh, Nest, uh, you, would, you would say uh, the wait words and, and it will start listening. And once it starts listening, you use your speech and uh, under the hood, it takes your speech and it will translate it to, to written text. That's a speech learning, uh, that's a speech to text model. Then it will understand the written text 
That's natural language understanding. The next step is that the chatbot uh, technology will match the solutions with each other. Intent matching or intent classification. We, we try to understand the intent of your conversation. And then we speak it out to you. Like So that's basically text-to-speech models, like these speech synthesizers. And within Google, we have technology that can make it um, you know, very natural. We do that with the WaveNet models. Now, how do you build chatbots? Typically, it's not just a, a chatbot tool. No, it's like a whole suite or a combination of tools all combined together. And just like when you build a website, it's not just HTML, it's probably also a database or a CMS, and you need to host your server or your, your website somewhere. Same as with chatbots, you probably want to pick a channel or multiple channels. Um, you might want to store data, so you might work with databases, databases and collect analytics. Uh, you might want to use different other machine learning models to make your experience richer. Like, so it's a whole suite of, yeah, of solutions. What you see here on this picture is actually a picture of the Lego store in New York. And it shows you like in, when you step into the store, you see like this huge pole full of Lego blocks. And uh, you can buy Lego bricks piece by piece, like different shapes, different colors. Uh, that's the same when we talk about chatbots within Google, yeah, or it happens actually within the Google Cloud. Uh, we have over 200 different components, and you can basically pick the components that you like and stack it on top of each other, just like Legos, to build a solution. And the main or the centerpiece in this architecture, that is dialect flow. And dialect flow is actually a suite for building conversational UIs that can be chatbots, that can be voice AIs, that can be chatbots in contact centers, you name it. Dialect flow, you might know, know of it, you might have heard from it before. Uh, they were formerly known as API.ai. They're very famous in the chatbot community. We have over, over a million, I think one and a half million almost, uh, users, developers, and, and UX designers using this tool. And it's API.ai got acquired by Google in 2016, in September 2016. And now it's part of the Google Cloud, so businesses can make use of Dialogflow. You can also use the free version if that's what you like. Um, yeah. uh, what's so special about Dialogflow is, is that it makes use of machine learning. So that means like you can train your chatbots with training phrases, but you can also teach the chatbot what's wrong. And uh, yeah, it does intent matching. So various machine learning models here. It's cross-platform, runs in a browser, but it also comes with the SDK, so developers can make use of it as well. And it has integration with voice, integration with 15 other channels out of the box, which is basically like flipping a switch and then you can make use of it or developers can use the SDK and integrate it in whatever they like. It has support over 20 languages, whether you use Spanish la language or Dutch or French or English. Yeah, it's all um, part of the NLU models. And I mentioned this already before because Dialogflow is also available in the Google Cloud. Uh, it's available for enterprises, so that means it comes with the SLA, it comes with support, it's fully compliant, whether you use the, you need to be compliant to the GDPR, yeah, you can use Dialogflow for this. It comes with user roles, permissions, and, and uh, extensive logging and a higher call quota. Um, so especially if you're an enterprise, this might be interesting for you. Let me show you how Dialogflow works. Dialogflow works based on intent matching. This means that, yeah, you as a UX designer can specify certain flows, like certain parts of conversations, and we train dialect flow uh, based on those uh, conversation parts. Now, if the user says something or types a question in the chatbot, it will look through all the intents to see which one has the highest match. That match, that will return the answer. So here, what you see on my screen is a list of all the intents that I have created. And an intent could be, for example, in my case, I created a chatbot for banks or finance sectors. And uh, in this example, 
I would like to transfer money. Transferring money is a part of a conversation. I can ask it in various different ways. So I specify training phrases. Like, can I send money to Russia? I would like to transfer money. I would like to give 14 euro 50 to bank account uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 in Germany. There are all different ways in how I can say the same thing. Why are certain words marked? Well, these are actually entities, custom entities. And that means like what I pass in is variable. So it's a parameter that will send later to a backend, for example. And whether I say Russia or Germany or Spain, it doesn't matter. It noticed that uh, Russia is a system entity. These are like countries or the names of a month or days in a week. Those are variables that Dialogflow already uh, is aware of. So it will mark that. But I can also create my own entities. I do that in the entities screen. I'll show you that later. So in your intent, you create training phrases to train your intent. You can also specify an answer. In my example, I hard coded the answers, but in a real banking application, that's probably not the case because Dialogflow is not transferring money. No, you as a bank will do that. So you will connect to a backend system and the backend system uh, follows up. If that's the case, then you need to select fulfillment and you enable a webhook. These are all the parameters that will be used and sent to the backend. So in my case, uh, an account number, which is what I need for transferring money, a destination and an amount. I mentioned entities before. Entities are objects where you can take action on. So for example, a payment category. A payment category could be I can transfer money for flights, for groceries, for mortgage. I can take actions on that. These are actually parameters or key value pairs. And I can define synonyms because I can say things in a different way. I could say uh, I want to transfer money for a restaurant or I want to transfer money for a, a dinner or a lunch and it will classify it as a restaurant. The fulfillment, this is when you want to connect it to your own backend system. In my example, I don't do this, but if I'm interested in doing so, I can enable the webhook and specify the URL of my own web services. It's also possible to uh, use the inline editor, and then I can use JavaScript to, uh, to write a cloud function and to uh, execute some code based on my uh, chatbot conversations. And then you can integrate your chatbot with various channels. We have out of the box a whole bunch of channels that you can use. For example, the Google Assistant. This is a very interesting one, a very easy one, because you only need to uh, yeah, click on the pop-up and, uh, and run test. And since it's connected to your Google account, it will automatically deploy your test app to, um, to the Google Assistant simulator and uh, you can try it with a test account. We have integrations for telephony partners. These are one-click telephony partners. So, for example, if you want to have an integration with Avaya, you just need to click on it and follow the wizard or the, there is a dialogue flow uh, default gateway, it gives you a telephone number and you can call that number and then you get the chatbot on, your, uh, on the other end of the line. We have integrations with Genesis out of the box, also through uh, content, contact center AI, uh, you can make use of all the other telephony partners. You can make text-based chatbots, for example, for web. We have two example uh, web integrations. One is a, a pop-up, a simple pop-up. The other one is a more advanced pop-up. It's new and in beta. It allows you to uh, change the styling or create some custom cards. You can also make use of the SDK. This is what I, I did and I will show you that in my later examples today where I use the SDK to integrate it in my own website or app. We have channels for Facebook Messenger, Hangouts, Slack, Twitter, you name it. 
And if the integration that you need is not in here, that's not a big deal. And you can implement it through, through the SDK. But you need, a, of course, you need a developer for that. What else? What's also really nice is that there is a validation option in Dialogflow, which gives you an out-of-the-box review of your chatbot. So it can tell you if there are mistakes in your training phrases, or it can tell you, give you some warnings like, yeah, it's better to solve these things on a different way. For example, if I look into my welcome intent, yeah, it says tells me that I don't have enough unique training phrases. So consider adding more different examples. So I could go back to my welcome intent and yeah, modify it. There it goes. See, like my all my examples are hi, hello, hi there. I could say, for example, welcome. Oh, let's start a conversation. Hi, Babs. And I'll save it. Let's see if this was enough. What you see here is the pop-up. It tells me that it's training the dialogue flow conversation model. And once it's done, yeah, you should see the results on screen. Yeah, and you see that the result is it's solved. The warning is gone. On the side, on the right side of Dialogflow console, there is a, a short simulator. You can make use of it. So I can test directly in Dialogflow how my conversations are going. So, hello, I'm Babs the Banking Bot. I'm here to help you with transferring money. Also, I can tell you how much money you have in your account. Please tell me how can I help you. How much money do I have in my account? It doesn't matter if I spell my questions wrong because I trained the model, it will understand what I mean. It will give me an answer. There's default analytics in Dialogflow integrated. So I can see like how many sessions I had over the past days. And uh, I could even see the session flow, like which, uh, which conversations people started with my chatbot. Dialogflow has pre-built agents. If you just want some help or you want to start with an uh, example, you can pick one of the lists and then Dialogflow can deploy it for you. There's also a small talk uh, module just to uh, add some funny conversation parts to your chatbot. All right, let's talk a little bit more about cross-channel development for chatbots in Dialogflow. The most common use case for building chatbots that's probably for web or social media. Yeah, these are, these can be like external chatbots for external public facing. But it can also be internal eh, when you're like a big enterprise company and you want your chatbots to be available only within your domain, yeah, you can do that. This is common. Yeah. And you can use these chatbots to, um, you can use these chatbots for internal um, experiences or internal processes. You can use it for external chatbots talking to your customers. Uh, yeah. You can use it on social media. These are the chatbots you probably know. There's another use case and these are the voice assistants. If you have built chatbots for the Google Assistant before, then you know what I'm talking about. We can create chatbots for smart speakers like the Google Assistant, like Alexa, even uh, I IoT or your own devices. Yeah, you can build that because with Dialogflow, we handle yeah, voice integration. And just a few notes about the Google Assistant, just if this is, sounds all new to you. Yeah, the Google Assistant, that is the AI from Google, just like Siri is for Apple and Alexa is for Amazon. Um, an action, that is basically an app that you can deploy on top of the Google Assistant. So you to bring your own brand to the Google Assistant uh, yeah, network. The Google Nest, Google Nest Mini, uh, or the Google Home, what was the old name? That, that is basically like a, a device, a smart speaker with a microphone and a speaker connected to the internet. 
powered by the Google Assistant, so with the Google Assistant AI on, in it. You can ask the Google Assistant uh, for certain questions. You can ask the Google Assistant, for example, to manage tasks, uh, like, for example, like what is my uh, confirmation number for my flight? You can ask the Google Assistant to plan your day, like how is my commute to the office? You can ask general questions uh, to the Google Assistant. For example, I could ask who is the king of the Netherlands? And then the Google Assistant will tell me, well, uh, that's Willem Alexander. Then I can ask a follow-up question. I could ask like, okay, well, and who is his wife? And the Google Assistant will understand the context. The context here is King Willem Alexander. So who is the, the wife of King Willem Alexander? Well, that's Maxima. You can use the Google Assistant to control your home. Uh, for example, you can ask the Google like, hey, turn off the lights, uh, turn on the TV, uh, make the temperature warmer in the house. If you connect the Google Assistant to all your smart devices, your smart home devices, yeah, then you can arrange that all in your house. And entertainment, huh? like you probably have done this before, like uh, play this song on Spotify. Play this song on Spotify or play this song on YouTube. You play this video on YouTube, play this video on Netflix. The last category that I would like to talk about, these are the call bots. These are the robots in the contact center. Now you might think like, oh, well, isn't that the same as the Google Assistant? Yeah, but then just when you call a number, you get the Google Assistant on the phone. No, it's way different. It's much more different actually, because if you think about it, the Google Assistant, yeah, that's actually qu quite simple types of questions that you ask. It's like a question with one utterance. Uh, for example, turn off the lights. Where if you think of a phone call, when you, when you do a phone call, eh, then people start having like whole conversations to you. Like, yeah, yesterday I uh, forgot to pay my bills and then my husband told me that I could wait two more days, but I'm not sure. And then yesterday I was actually ill, so I forgot about that too. And now I'm calling, so when can I pay? I'm mentioning like all kinds of questions, all kinds of questions now here, right? Like it's for a human sometimes difficult to figure out like what's the real intent. Now imagine how that is for a computer. What is the real intent? So these are long utterances. There are many possible intent matches. It's quite difficult for a machine to figure out like what, what question do I need to answer? Now let's design an experience for a particular channel. Let's look at a website. Uh, typically, and I think 99% of the websites are built this way. Uh, this is an example of a banking website. And if you want to search a particular transaction, yeah, you need to type in the bank account number or the company name. And once you type that in, then you can filter a grid and you see the transactions. Now imagine that you use natural language here in this experience. So instead of uh, typing in the bank account number, I am using a search query such as how much have I spent on taxis last month? This is similar like the experience how it works on google.com and you can also use like a full search query and it finds the right website. Now in our case, in this example, you see that the website will be filtered based on a, on a natural language query. Imagine that there is no website. In this case, there is no screen. But the intent is the same. The type of questions that you ask are similar. I can ask how much have I spent on taxis last month? Well, it looks like uh, you spent about 20 euros on taxis uh, last month and you took the TCA taxi twice. See, that's the same, a similar it's the same intent match, but it's a different experience because there is no screen. So now I'm not gonna list every, every transaction. You wouldn't be happy if you're here, like a whole book being read out. Now, in this case, we're just we're highlighting a few records, like the most important ones. And the Google Assistant, there are also Google Assistant devices, the smart screen devices, that have a screen. It's not like an iPad. It's, it is a voice device. The, the OS is voice. It's powered by voice, but it can enrich your experiences by showing certain screens. So if we look at this example again, how much have I spent on taxis last night? Well, it looks like you spent about 20 euros on taxis and you took the TCA twi uh, taxi twice. 
And here is an overview. And then it shows the overview on the screen. And you see these smart uh, assistant devices, maybe for recipe apps, but things like with overviews, that, that's where it actually is great for. Now, the last example, those are the chatbots in the contact centers. And I mentioned that already very quickly, robots that pick up the phone and can help you with your experiences. It can help you with your questions. Uh, now, think about the last time when you called a contact center. I bet that experience wasn't really great. It's just how it is. I think 99% of these uh, times that you call a service number are like that. Like there are long waiting lines, especially now with the corona crisis, unlimited call transfers uh, that you, for example, yeah, say like, well, my internet is not working. Oh, one moment, please. We will connect you to the technical department. And I have to rephrase the whole question again. IVRs that are difficult to navigate. Yeah, for example, you get to hear like, well, press number nine for uh, XYZ department. So you have to wait the whole tape recording till you are at number nine. Availability. How many times did I call to a service number after five o'clock? And it tells me like, well, actually, we're closed. Okay. Inadequate information. This happens a lot. And I can tell you, I see this a lot happening at um, health insurance companies at the end of the year. Because at the end of the year, they have too many people calling the, the insurance to change their insurance. So what they do is they hire lots of students to pick up the phone. Yeah, and they obviously aren't properly trained, so they might give the wrong answer. And the thing is, like all these agents, they always have to give answers to the same types of questions. So when you are an insurance company, I bet that eight of the 10 cases are people that are asked like, oh, am I insured for this? And what about that? Is that also insured? Like if you only could automate one type of these questions, yeah, that would create already a much better experience, of course. And customers, they expect a great and flexible personal experience. 60% of the customers expect self-service and 64% of the users, uh, they want it in real time. And 75% of the users prefer uh, personal contact. But that does not necessarily mean that it's a chatbot. When the chatbot uh, creates like a personal experience, and it's okay. Now, what do we have at Google? We have a solution, it's called Contact Center AI. It's part of Dialogflow. It uses machine learning, or AI, to make an experience of a service member uh, better. It's an out-of-the-box solution that we deliver together with telephony partners, such as Cisco, Avaya, or Genesis, and, and many others. And uh, we can enable that out-of-the-box for you in your contact center. And to show you how this works, I'm going to show you now a video uh, of Contact Center AI. Hello, Mala. I'm an automated agent. Welcome back to eBay. It looks like we just delivered you white Pamarka size six running shoes on June 25th. Are you calling about this order? Yeah, exactly. Okay. How can I help you with that order? Unfortunately, they don't fit, so I need to return them. I can help you with that. I am starting a return for you. You will be receiving an email with the details of your return. Cool, thanks. Mala conversed with a virtual agent that understood Mala's intent to return her shoes and automatically fulfilled it. But now Mala needs another, better fitting pair of shoes. The virtual agent will detect this and will offer to connect Mala to a live agent. One more thing, would you like me to connect you to an eBay fashion expert to help find you the right shoes? Yeah, that'd be great. Mala now wants to purchase a pair of shoes. Google Contact Center AI recognizes this intent and works with Genesis Predictive Routing to find the best agent to help. Genesis predicts that Josh, among all qualified agents, is the best matching fashion expert to help Mala at this moment. Mala's call is routed to Josh, including all previous contacts about Mala's order and her conversation with a virtual agent. Hello there, Mala. My name is Josh. I'd be happy to help you find the right... The transcript of Mala's conversation with a virtual agent is visible to Josh, and her conversation with Josh is also transcribed and interpreted in real time. As Josh and Mala are speaking, 
Agent Assist interprets the audio and builds context on the meaning and the intent of the conversation. This allows Agent Assist to find relevant answers and articles to help Josh in real time. I definitely recommend tennis shoes since they're designed to have the right support, grip, and to avoid an injury. What type of court will you be playing on? It will be primarily hard court. And is Pomarka your brand of preference, or would you like to explore other brands? I like Pomarka shoes. Agent Assist detected in real time that another knowledge base page contains the right content for Mala's request and made it available to Josh. All right. I just searched eBay for you for hard court tennis shoes, women's size six, and I found a great listing. Would you like me to text it to you or would you rather receive it via email? Could you text it? Certainly. Thanks for choosing eBay. As you have seen in the video, huh? we see, have seen chatbots that can understand your question. So no longer you need to listen to an IVR recording or you need to be put on hold or in waiting lines. No, the, you, you immediately call the service number and you phrase your question and the chatbot will help you. Um, this will shorten your call time, this will shorten your uh, hold time and it means that it's 24 seven available. And what can happen is that the chatbot does not know how to answer your question because it wasn't trained that way. Uh, now what you could do is the chatbot could hand over your call to an employee, but then the chatbot still listens in and gives the employee suggestions on the screen what to answer. So therefore the employee always gives the right answer. It can shorten the whole time and it can shorten the call time. And this is very interesting for companies. And for agents, this means that they they, the chatbot gives in real time help. So that means that all the most common questions that are always uh, coming back, the chatbot will answer. Um, therefore, it will shorten the training cycles and you can improve call quality. But they can also help to, call, uh, to close cases much quicker. And because the agent assist will always show you the suggestions on the screen. And for businesses, this is very interesting because yeah, they always get the insights and they can see on what topics have been discussed, like what are people are calling for. They can get the full call transcripts and they can integrate it in their own telephone uh, IVR system because it, we're working together with these telephone partners. And yet, of course, cost reduction, which I think in contact centers is the most important case. Let's look into a couple of examples. I'm going to show you an example of a chatbot for web. I'm going to show you the same chatbot developed for the Google Assistant and I'm going to show you the same chatbot developed for contact centers on a phone. You will see that it's powered by one direct flow agent with one set of training phrases but it can handle all these channels. Let's have a look. In this first demo you will see that I integrated my conversation in a website. Uh, this is a web chat. Uh, this is a banking portal, a fake banking portal, which I've created for demo purposes. And you can see that I can navigate to the chatbot and the chatbot will greet me with a welcome message. I can start my conversation. For example, I would like to transfer money. To which bank account number would you like to transfer the money to? Um, Zero, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And how much do you want to transfer? 23 euro. And what is the destination country? Germany. All right then, I will transfer 23 euro to bank account number blah to Germany. Is there anything else I can help you with? Well, now notice that I've created certain experiences for devices with screens only. For example, I can display cards in my chatbot. So let's give it a try. What's your location? It displays a card. In my next example, I will show you how this experience will look like on a Google Assistant. What you see here on the screen, that is the Google Assistant simulator. This means that I can access my app from my laptop or my PC. But since it's also linked to my Google email address, 
I can also access it via my Nest Hub, my Google Home, or via uh, a phone. And, and this will work without bringing it to production. I just need to wake it with the wake words, hey Google, talk to my test app. Well, let's give it a try. In the simulator, I click on talk to my test app. Let's get the test version of my test app. Hello, I'm Babs the Banking Bot. I can help you with transferring money, requesting your balance, or I can tell you your payment history. How can I help you? You can see that I can type my search queries here, or I can speak it in by pressing the microphone button, and this is what I will do. I would like to transfer money. To which bank IBAN number do you want to transfer money? And please pay attention when I say the bank account number, because you see that the machine learning model, they first hear something else and then they correct it while I'm speaking. 01234567789. What's the amount you want to transfer? 45 euro. What's the destination country? Spain it is. All right, I will transfer 45 euros to bank account 01234567789 Spain. Is there anything else I can help you with? What will it cost? It costs 15 euro to transfer money to Spain. Goodbye. All right, for this example, we're going to use the telephone line uh, to call a robot on the phone and see how that works. Uh, so I'm dialing the number and I put the phone on speaker. Hi there, I'm Babs the Banking Bot. I can help you with transferring money or I can tell you how much balance you have in your account. How can I help you? If you want to speak with an employee, please say, I would like to speak to someone. Okay, I would like to transfer money. What bank account number would you like to transfer money to? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. How much do you want to transfer? 25 euro. What's the destination country? Germany. All right, I will transfer 25 euros to bank account 01234567789 Germany. Is there anything else I can help you with? How much money do I have in my account? Your balance is minus 8,101.90 no! euro. Now let's talk a little bit more about omnichannel experiences. Uh, imagine that your customers, they are, um, they're on the website. On, on your website, let's say it's a banking website, and uh, they are looking for, they are looking for um, a mortgage. So they are they're viewing a few pages, and then um, they close the website. They come back the next day. They talk to the chatbot. The chatbot uh, they talk further about mortgages. Chatbot gives some suggestions. It's fine. And then the next week, the customer calls to the bank because he has a problem with payments. And he thinks that there's fraud. Um, the employee or the chatbot, maybe it's also an automated chatbot on the, on the contact center, it gives the answer like, well, yeah, it's fraud, we can block your number, blah, blah, blah. Is there anything else you have questions for? No, not really. Oh, but by the way, I've seen that you have some interest in mortgages. Yeah, actually, that's true. I do have some questions about mortgages. Shall I text it to you? Yes, please. Now, that's an, a great example of an omnichannel experience uh, where it's all provided by the same chatbot and the same data lake. Once you, have, once you power your chatbot by the same infrastructure and the same data, then you can deliver this because you collect this information of the mortgages, of the whole chatbot history, of the whole web page uh, viewing history, store that all in the same database. 
And when then the chatbot is talking to you on a, on a telephone line, it suddenly can see those records and maybe offer you deals. That's a great example. Let's have a look. In this demo, I'm using the same banking chatbot as I showed before, where I use the, the banking website and the Google Assistant and maybe also the phone line. And you've seen that it worked. But now, imagine that I also want to figure out like which customers are unhappy and why are they unhappy. So basically, I want to collect some analytics. And maybe I also want to improve the experience over time. And what I can do here is I, uh, I look into the dialogue flow uh, transcripts. And I can do this because in real time, I can get access to every chatbot, uh, to every chatbot message. We have tools in Google Cloud that can uh, remove or mask sensitive information. So think about uh, PAI data. You, maybe you don't want to store your passport number on the, on the, uh, in a database. Or maybe, maybe that's because of GDPR reasons. Then you want to understand what the user has been saying. And we can do that with natural language understanding. We can even detect sentiment out of this. Figure out like, is the user happy or unhappy and why? Then we store everything in a database or in a data warehouse. In our case, this is BigQuery. And once it's in BigQuery, I can always improve and optimize my agent over time. Let's have a look into an example on how I did this. Let's have a look right now. Back to the web chat demo. Now, as you now know, we have created working experiences for web, smart assistants, and telephones. Since I store every incoming chatbot message in BigQuery, and since I have a session ID, I will be able to request a transcript. So let's give it a try. You can see here a dashboard that I've created in my website. And you see here, because I also detect the sentiment through natural language understanding, I can uh, make a list of the top 10 most negative chatbot responses. So people that were angry at the chatbot, for example. Now, if I look into this list, I he see here like an, uh, a sentiment score of minus 80%. This person is really annoyed. Now let's have a look and see what went wrong in this chatbot uh, conversation. So I copy the session ID and I scroll down where I want to track my conversation. Basically what I do is I tell the database, or in this case BigQuery, like select every chatbot message where the session ID equals to this and then sort on date and time. What you will get is a result like this. And you can see here, like the person asked, like, did my salary came in today? And the chatbot, it wasn't programmed uh, to give that answer. It didn't have training phrases for that. So it said, like, sorry, what was that? It detected the default fallback intent. My salary, when will I receive it? Again, chatbot didn't know what to answer. Did my company transfer money? Again, chatbot didn't know what to answer. And now the person gets really annoyed and it tells that to the chatbot. And again, even when people are angry, chatbot doesn't know what to answer. You see here that the, the sentiment score now goes like really low. So what did I learn from this? Well, first of all, when people are angry, my chatbot doesn't know what to answer. The least thing that I could do is I could create an intent that can handle emotions. A better experience would be to uh, hand over the call to an employee. Uh, who can see the transcript and can take over the conversation and, and calm the customer down. Uh, the other, and I think this is the most important thing uh, of today, is that uh, what I learned here is that apparently customers are asking for different questions than that my chatbot was programmed for. So what I should do is I should go back into Dialogflow and create an intent where people can ask for salary so that I can handle those type of questions. And just to be honest, I actually don't need sentiment to detect that the customer gets angry. If I get a second fallback intent after the first one, well, I can probably yeah, guess that my customer isn't happy. All right, so conclusion for today. Wouldn't it be nice to build one AI solution that can answer all types of questions and it's available from everywhere?
something like this. It doesn't matter anymore if you talk to the chatbot via a Google Assistant, via the telephone, or via a website or social media. It all goes to Dialogflow, and then you can branch it out to the Google Assistant uh, that it reads it out for you, or it shows it on a website, or suggestions for a um, uh, con contact center employee. And if you power this all by a data, data lake, a data warehouse, yeah, then you can uh, learn from it and make your experiences much smarter. But even if you just add one new channel to your infrastructure of chatbots, you can already improve your customer experience and trim your business cost. Thank you very much.